Okay, now we're in chapter seven of how to read a book, and this is called X-raying a book. So here's the outline, and I'm just following the outline from the chapter. X-raying a book of plots and plans, mastering the multiplicity, the reciprocal arts of reading and writing, discovering the author's intention, and finally, the first stage of analytical reading. So with chapter six, we started on um, the level of reading that's called analytical reading, and through six and seven, Adler kind of lays out the first stage of analytical reading, and there are three stages. So, x-raying a book. Um, so, the need when reading uh, to see the structure or the skeleton of a book leads to this discovery of the second and third rules for analytical reading. You should, as uh, uh, rule two states, be able to state the unity of the whole book in a single sentence, or at most a few sentences, i.e. a short paragraph. Okay, so that is, you should state the main point of the book as briefly as possible. If you can't do that, you don't understand what the book is about. So if you can't state the purpose or the main point of the book in just a few sentences, you do not understand what the book is about. Okay. And then, well, how do you, how do you find out the main point of a book? Well, you know, like the author might just go out and say it in the preface or the introduction um, or at the end of the book, you know, when he's summarizing or she's summarizing the book. Um, but another way to find it out is just to read the read the book. You can do your inspectional reading, and you may be able to find it out through inspectional reading. Or you can do your analytical reading. You may be able to find it out through that. But this is going to require uh, being able to see the main sort of argument of the book. Uh, and the best way to be able to do that is to follow Adler's advice um, for how to read a book, you know, um, inspectional reading, analytical reading, and, um, you know, it's a skill. It's a skill. So just because you know the rules for, like, how to read a book, it doesn't mean that you're going to be able to right away, um, quickly and easily, you know, find the unity of the whole book or be able to state it. Um, but as you read over time, you're going to get better at practicing the rules. You're going to get better at implementing the rules. Okay, so rule three. Set forth the major parts of the book and show how these are organized into a whole by being ordered to one another and to the unity of the whole. That is, your, you should outline the structure of the book. Outline the structure of the book. So you have a statement of, a summary statement of the book and then the structure of the book. So for example, um, consider this summary and outline of The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg, a book I recommend. Uh, summary, The Power of Habit helps you understand why habits are at the core of everything you do, how you can change them, and what impact that will have on your life, your business, and society. Okay, that's the summary statement, what the book is about. And then the outline, though a complete outline should outline each of one, two, and three, and I'll get into that. You've got the habits of individuals, the habits of organizations, and the habits of societies. And I just came up with that outline by looking at the table of contents. The table of contents gave me all that I needed to know to come up with this very broad outline. Now, to do a very complete outline where you're giving very detailed uh, a detailed breakdown of the book, you're going to need to read the book at least at an inspectional uh, level. Okay, of plots and plans. In determining the main point of, we're back to the, you know, main point of a book, rule number two, let the author help you, right? The author, like I said, is, is going to try to, a good author is going to let you know what the book is about. So you should look at the title. Um, let's think of the title of our book, uh, How to Read a Book, The Classic Guide to Intelligent Reading. I mean, that tells you quite a bit about the 
the main point of the book. The main point of the book is to help you know help you read intelligently. And what does that mean? Well, to understand what that means, you have to get into the content of the book. But you could also look at the preface or the introductory material, even the book cover, right? Some book covers have the author's um, sort of blurb on what the book is about, um, what he's trying to accomplish. Uh, but our book doesn't. How to Read a Book does not have that. At least my copy doesn't. But it does have sort of promotionals on the back. And that tells you quite a bit about what the book is about, the promotionals on the back. So don't neglect these aspects of, of the book. They can give you really valuable information. Um, that takes, if you were to find out that same information for yourself, um, by reading the book, that would take a lot of work, but the author just gives it to you right there in the title, the preface, the introduction, and on the cover. So mastering the multiplicity. Mastering the multiplicity is, is trying to find the, um, you know, the, uh, the way that all the details fit together, the multiplicity of details. How does that all, how do you master that? How do you fit it all together? Um, when you're outlining a book, uh, you, you know, you're trying to fit all the parts together according to what the book is about. So the outline of the book should be very detailed. It will divide the book into parts, and then the parts into parts, and those parts into parts, etc. So for example, or as a formula, you have the summary. This book is about such and such. Then you have the outline. Step one, the author accomplished this plan the summary of the book in five major parts of which the first part is about so and so the second part is about such and such etc etc so the first step in an outline is to come up with the the largest or the largest or the most general structure of the book and then the second part would be to break down um, each part of that structure into its own parts Step number two, the first of the major parts is divided into three sections, of which the first considers X, the second considers Y, the third considers Z. Okay, so you've broken down the parts into the parts. Step three, in the first section of the first major part, the author makes four points, of which the first is A, the second is B, etc. So now you're breaking down the parts of the parts into its parts. And you just keep going depending on how detailed you want your outline to be. You know, theoretically, as Adler says, an outline of a book might be longer than the book itself. Of course, that depends on the level of commitment you have to a book. And what level of commitment you have to the book depends on your purpose in reading it. And so, if you know, if you're not too... Um, interested in the book, your, your, your outline is going to be very general and uh, lacking in detail. But if it's, it's a book that say you want to, you say you want to center your life around a book, um, then you're going to, you know, you're, you're, you're going to outline it in an extremely detailed fashion, uh, because it's your guide for life, right? Okay, not, like I said, not every book deserves a detailed outline. It may be enough to have a rough notion of the structure. You know, you, you, uh, your friend recommends a book, and you don't find it that interesting, but you think, well, you know, I'm going to get something out of it, and uh, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to say that I've read it to my friend, and well, it'd be genuine about having read it, right? Um, yeah, it may be enough just to know the very broad um, structure. The detail of your outline should vary according to the character of the book and your purpose in reading it. Okay, the reciprocal arts of reading and writing. The first two rules of analytical reading are just as much rules of writing as well. So when you write, you're going to want um, to be able to state the unity of the thing you're writing, as well as the structure of the thing you're writing. For me, I've got to do that before I ever do the writing. Why am I writing, 
and how am I going to accomplish what I'm writing? Um, how am I going to structure it? I like to do that before I ever start writing. To construct an outline and construct a purpose. And, you know, the outline is based on the purpose. What's the best way to accomplish that purpose? Well, why is there this sort of congruence between reading and writing? Well, reading and writing are reciprocal. Both are communication from one person to another. It just depends on, you know, which side of the communication are you on and how well do you want to communicate it or be communicated to. Um, if you're writing, oh, there's a typo, you are writing, then you should write with unity, clarity, and coherence. You need a main point and a structure formed according to that point. Find, uh, discovering the author's intentions. So rule number four of analytical reading, you find out what the author's problems are. You know, I'm not talking about, you know, the author's, um, the author's secret sins or something or the, the author's money issues. Uh, what we're talking about is like what sort of problem is the author seeking to address through the book. So the author of a book starts with a question or a set of questions, and the book ostensibly, you know, contains the answers. So the author set, sets out to ask a question, and um, then the book is the answer to those uh, that question or those questions. So you should be able to state the main question that the book tries to answer. This is another way of talking about the unity or the point of the book. Um, what is the author's problem, and what is the answer to that problem? Finally, we can summarize the first stage of analytical reading. So one, you need to classify the book according to its kind and subject matter. Is it fiction, nonfiction, history, philosophy, science? Um, uh, then you need to be able to state, once you have it classified, you need to be able to state what the whole book is about. And you need to be able to enumerate its parts in their order and relation and outline these parts as you have outlined the whole. And then finally, you should be able to define the problem or problems the author is trying to solve. At this first stage of analytical reading, um, you're trying to answer the first of the four basic questions that you must ask of any book. What is the book about as a whole? So in one through four, you're getting at this. What is the book about as a whole? And that's going to help you uh, read intelligently because you already know, hey, this is nonfiction and it's a history, so it's going to take me into the past. And I know it's trying to tell me about U.S. history. And I'm, I you know, have the outline here of, uh, of the book, uh, whatever it is, the formation of, of the U.S., um, pre-Civil War U.S., uh, post-Civil War, pre-World War I U.S., you know, etc. And then um, you've got a basic structure of the book, and then the problem or problems the author is trying to solve, uh, whatever problem he's trying to solve about, uh, you know, U.S. history. We don't have a real book in mind, so we don't or aren't able to answer that question. Uh, but there you go. That's the first stage of analytical reading trying to figure out what the book is about as a whole.